In today's video, I'm gonna to talk to you about the two main types of cocktail shakers. Hey Trick Stuff fans, I'm Steve the Barman. In today's video, I'm just gonna give you a quick rundown of the two types of cocktail sh shakers uh, that you can get. And you may be thinking, well, hang on, what's the difference? Why would I get one over the other? So, uh, first off, you can see, essentially we break down into two types. Okay, we've got the two-piece Boston shaker, and we've got the kind of, I call them three-piece shakers, but they are kind of technically known as cobbler shakers. Now, uh, I'm gonna start with the, the, uh, the cobblers, the three-piece shakers. What you'll get with these, and it doesn't matter, they're all completely different designs. These are just two of the most popular that drink stuff sell. These will be broken down, as the name suggests, into three-piece cocktail shakers. So, you kind of get a tin, which could be anything between 14, 16, 18 ounce, maybe a few bigger ones, maybe a 20 ounce, but roughly about the sort of 16 ounce mark. You'll get um, the kind of lid, or the, the strainer part of the cobbler, uh, so that just sits nicely on top there, and then you get the lid. And in some cases, uh, the very clever ones, they are a bit more expensive, but the very clever ones actually um, sort of double up as a measure as well. These, these ones don't, but that is a design feature of some of them. And the lid just fits on there, and you just kind of hold it like that and give it a good shake. Exactly the same with this. All cobbler shakers or three-piece shakers are exactly the same. You'll have a tin, you'll have a strainer, and you'll have a lid. Now, you might be thinking, oh, that's really cool. As a professional bartender, I'm not poo-pooing these at all if you're at home, but as a professional bartender, we would re rarely ever use a three-piece shaker, simply because of one reason. When you shake them down, and bear in mind, we are shaking them very hard to chill them down very quickly and to get them at proper temperature. What that does is that creates a really solid vacuum and sometimes you really struggle to get even that little bit of the lid off, let alone this bit as well. They're just a pain in the backside sometimes. Uh, when you're at home, it's not really an issue, but when, like us, you're making 30, 50, 100 cocktails in a night, you really don't want to be arm wrestling with a cobbler shaker. So perfect if you're at home, but in a professional setting, not quite so much. However, the other argument is that it is tin on tin, on tin and it will chill the drink down uh, a little bit quicker. And I'll get, that'll become relevant in a second. So that's a, um, the sort of three-piece cobbler shakers. Now, let's move on to Boston shakers. Boston shakers, two-piece shakers, come in all weird and wonderful and wacky colors these days. Uh, for those of you that watch my cocktail channel, you will definitely recognize this. This isn't mine, this is drink stuff. Um, but we've also got bronze. And I'll be in future videos, I'm gonna be talking uh, through the ranges, uh, the this sort of bar, cocktail equipment ranges is what we've got here as well. But just for this video, the two-part shaker, all you really get is in this case, in this case, uh, you get a glass and a tin or you get tin on tin. Now for us, for professionals, uh, they are really quick, really easy, and that's what we use. Is there a difference between glass and tin? Why would you have one or the other? I'll be honest, for me, because I do a lot of video work and because I do a lot of masterclasses where I'm teaching, I will always use a glass so people in front of me and you guys on camera can see exactly what's going in that glass. However, the downside of a glass is they are slightly heavier and they don't conduct heat as well, meaning that actually it doesn't chill the drink down as quickly and as efficiently as tin on tin. However, I do use glasses, I, I use them all the time. So that's uh, tin on glass. There is another thing to kind of tell you about in a second, but tin on tin, um, Again, these the glasses, so glasses are roughly 16 ounce and the tins can go up to sort of 28 ounce, but again, they do come in various different shapes and sizes. So we've got a 16 ounce tin there. We've got, that'll fit nicely in a, um, uh, the 28 ounce tin there. Now, all these do, you know, you might think, well, how does it stick together? Well, very, very simply, you make your cocktail in the smaller end. You just, you pop your tin on at a slight angle like that and give it a little tap. And that creates a vacuum. So when you're shaking, you've obviously got the tin that way. So if it does come to bits, it won't. But if it does come to bits, it kind of will come this way as opposed to going over your guests that way. But it'll just create that vacuum. Now me, because I've done this millions of times over my career, I don't really need to twat it against the bar. I don't even give it a whack or anything like that. The force of my hand can literally break the seal just in one swift movement there. However, sometimes you might just need to give it a little whack there. You don't need to ever need to hit it against the bar. 
never ever do that but just give it a little whack there and that will just release the vacuum but as I say when you're just used to doing it so many times over your year you literally you're forced your grip of one hand will just pull that out now you might be thinking all right but well, hang on a minute how do we strain our cocktails out of there because these the cobbler shakers have got a little uh, strainer on there so how do we go about doing that well this is where tools like this come into effect I've got very posh I really like this one actually just stolen it off the shelf a uh, really cool hawthorn strainer sometimes we get um, without the prongs uh, sometimes we've got two prongs sometimes we've got four prongs the four prong ones tend to be the cheaper ones out the lot but all this will do this will just sit nicely on top of your tin like that and then you'll be able to pour the cocktail uh, out like that now there is one other piece of the the puzzle as well and you kind of do need this for both styles of cocktail shaker so this would be called single straining which exactly which mirrors exactly the same effect of that so whether you pour in there or pour in there now the final piece of the puzzle is what we call fine straining or me i call it double straining or just it's a tea strainer effectively but it's a fine sieve whatever you want to call it and what we would use that for is to collect any little tiny shards of ice or if you've muddled or shaken raspberries or anything like that you would catch the fruit so as i said there's literally no right or wrong with whatever style of cocktail shaker you want at home professional bars you probably would go for a two-piece shaker but i hope that kind of clears up the mysteries and the myths behind a three piece and a two piece and what you would uh, kind of want to get for your home so go and check out the drink stuff website as i said i will be covering all their range uh, in the future months there is plenty of choose from from cool tiki stuff like this to pewter effect to black effect to bronze you name it they've got it